the uh, video <coughs> from Margaret Walburn. Are you ready to go? David, are we ready to go? Yeah. Yep. Good morning, everyone. I trust you are all well. Thank you very much for inviting me back um, and allowing me to bring a message to you this morning. <coughs> and thank you for allowing me to come um, by means of video again. Today, I'm bringing a story from the Old Testament, which I hope will give us food for thought and bring us some encouragement. I would like us to think this morning about waiting well, hope, and God's timing, his perfect timing, which we sometimes mistakenly call coincidence. We've had to learn a lot about waiting over the past two years, haven't we? The story this morning is about an unnamed woman. We just know that she lived in a place called Shunem. Having no name recorded indicates powerlessness. But powerless she may have been, she is a wonderful example of waiting well and acting at the right time. She demonstrated this in her personal life and also in a time of national crisis. The verses that we heard in our reading today show her when things finally came together so wonderfully as she arrived at just the right time and when the right person was present. But her ability to wait and trust had taken some tough experiences to develop. Her life hadn't been all plain sailing. However, through it all, she had learned about the Lord <coughs> through his prophet Elisha. She had learned how to trust God. No scriptures to hand for her as they are for us, so she needed that intermediary that Elisha became for her. We're probably familiar with the happenings earlier in her life, which are preserved for us in 2 Kings chapter 4. And we're often told um, this story when we're children in Sunday school, because it's so exciting. In chapter 4, we discover that she was quite well off and generous. She wanted to be a blessing to God's servant who visited her home when on his way through the area. Her example prompts my first question. Do we try to be a blessing to the people God places as our leaders? Do we seek to bless our ministers and deacons? <coughs> what a difference we can make as they minister and care for God's people. Through her generous hospitality, she came to know God's servant Elisha very well. She had a room built for him so that he would have his own space when he called. Sometime later, Elisha decided that he wanted to express his appreciation, so offered help. What can be done for you? he asked her. That's in 2 Kings 4, verse 13. We are told that she had been unable to have any children, which for a Jewish woman in those days carried a stigma, because it was gener generally thought that God was withholding this blessing for a reason. But she didn't say to Elisha what was in her heart. By her answer to him, we discover that either she had learned to be content in her circumstances, or that she had just resigned herself to the disappointment. The 
This prompts my next question. Have we done a similar thing? Is there something that we used to pray for and the years have gone by and we've chosen resignation and given up hope? I know the other extreme, of course, is to become really impatient when it seems that God is not listening to us. Are we contented or just resigned to our lives at present? Are we patient or impatient people? This lady challenges me to learn to wait well, to wait patiently, but with perseverance and trust as we continue to pray. It was Gehazi, the servant, who told Elisha about the woman's deep longing and she was finally blessed with a son and with great joy. Imagine the situation then when several years later it seemed that all was lost. After severe head pains in the morning, the boy died in her arms at noon. Her reaction is different this time, not resignation to this unhappy event, but instead hope. She placed her son on Elisha's bed in his little room whilst she sought help from God through Elisha. I read a heading for this story in which it was called A Bed of Hope. She didn't try to manage the situation in her own strength, nor did she turn to other people, not even her husband or Gehazi, whom she passed on her way. 2 Kings 4 tells us the action-packed account of what finally resulted in the boy's resurrection. Her hope had been well placed. This reminds me of a similar incident in the life of our Lord. In John 11, we read that Jesus waited before going to his friends, Martha and Mary, when their brother Lazarus became ill and died. Jesus' disciples and the sisters questioned why Jesus delayed. If you had been here, Martha said. Lord, if you had been here, said Mary later, Jesus explained that the timing had a purpose and that if they believed they would see the glory of God, which of course they did, and so did the many onlookers. Jesus wasn't late, he was on time perfect time. Our reading today tells us about an event later in the woman's life. We discover that she's now a widow with her son still living. We have discovered how her experiences have taught her that she can trust God in all things. So when Elisha tells her to leave home and become a refugee, in a foreign country among a people who often behave like enemies, she did as she was told. Sadly, I think we all have a clearer picture this week of what that means. To leave home with all its furnishings and memories. To leave the means of income to leave neighbours and community, to leave security and familiarity for an unknown place is a huge, huge wrench. Yet her obedience seemed to have been immediate. Verse 2, the woman proceeded to do as the man of God said. He told her to go for seven years to avoid famine. Chap 
chapter 6 explains that this was the kind of famine we are seeing in eastern Ukraine when the lack of food is caused by military occupation and siege. The woman continued to trust and obey, so returned after seven years. Of course, seven in scripture is used as the perfect number. So we can say that this was God's perfect timing. Her arrival back in Shunem at the right time just confirmed this perfect timing. The woman's obedience, waiting and trust all resulted in what some might want to dismiss as an amazing coincidence. But it wasn't just coincidence, was it? She arrived at the right place at the right time when the right person was present. Verse 5 begins just as, and we hear how Gehazi has been asked by the king to recount the stories and exploits of Elisha. And as he had been telling those stories, he had told about the, the raising of the boy from the dead. The woman arrived and Gehazi was, be, was able to say, and here is the woman, and here's the boy. So what a great result. Not only did she receive her home and possessions back, the king arranged the extra blessing of the income that she would have earned from the land in the seven years she was away. in Psalm 31, which says, My times are in your hand, O Lord. The psalm was written by David, and we know that he was at times in his life in danger of death and in great uncertainty through life events. In spite of all his experiences, he wrote or sang, but I trust in you, O Lord. I say, you are my God. My times are in your hands. Have you seen the much circulated video of Ukrainian Christians reading this psalm, Psalm 31? As they're using it as their prayer for these uncertain days in their country. The video shows many short clips recorded in basements, amongst luggage, in subways or bunkers, in all kinds of corners. It shows Ukrainians of all ages praying this psalm. This whole psalm, and it fits their circumstance of these days. It's a lovely thing to do. You might want to choose to pray this psalm with them. Psalm 31. The verse continues, My times are in your hands. Deliver me from my enemies and from those who pursue me. David <coughs> knew the truth of this. The Shunammite woman knew the truth of this. Mary Martha and Lazarus knew this. And we can know that it is true for us too. Also, as we wonder about the events of history, the events within the world, we can have hope because these times are in God's hands too. We know that he sent Jesus to earth at just the right time. Jesus will return at just the right time that has been appointed by God. So we can live in hope in these difficult days. We can wait well 
in all the circumstances of our lives because our times are in his hands. Praise God. <laughs>